Let us watch. Tricking my way into New York City's billionaire penthouses, fakes, frauds, and scammers. Don't really know who you're dealing with. She could have been an actual billionaire. She could have been a scam artist, and I would never know the difference. This project is kind of like a Robin Hood project. I pretended to be a billionaire so I can get into the most exclusive apartments in New York. We're not I just love selling shit like the this. building. The reason why people are living here is because of the lifestyle that we're offering. 85 million, 10 million. New York City is the number one city on the planet for the most amount of billionaires. I believe there's like 78 of them or something living in uh, New York City. A fun fact, I guess, if you didn't know, I think it's like Beijing is another one. Uh, but yeah, New York City has like been number one for uh, many, many years, uh, according to Forbes. 16 million. These people are the 1% of the 1%. I think it's really obscene that like these buildings exist. You're made with me getting ready with dinner. Chapo Trap House too? Did Chapo Trap House talk about that? I have not listened to their latest episode. I don't know if they talked about it. I saw it on a TikTok. Forbes did a... I saw it on Forbes TikTok where they... Uh, where they look at like the top cities with billionaires. Hong Kong is one, Shenzhen is another, Shanghai is another, uh, I think, Shang not Shanghai, Beijing is another. Um, it's just, uh, but. No, it's not Dallas. Uh, I wanna be a powerful billionaire, I'm willing to do anything to get there. What? Chapo, chalk trap house lame as fuck <laughs> i love when people are like fans of mine but don't like chopper troubles is like so weird okay let's get here while you're just having one of the finest champagnes in a soaking london dog. is another one london is a big billionaire city as well meet your husband imagine waking up every morning to these views gabriella moscow is another one as well moscow is another big billionaire city they lost a lot of billionaires however because of the uh the the gruesome uh, sanctions. I really Craig see you. Thank you for the the subs. The cheapest property I've been to was 10 million. Disgusting. And the most Ew. No billionaire would be dead. We'd be caught dead. Seen in a fucking property that's only 10 million dollars. That's disgusting. And say was 85 million. They manipulate the cities to the disadvantage of everyone else in the cities. My name is Andy Schmid, and in 2016, I spent three months in New York at an artist residency program. Basically, this whole idea started um, with the biggest cliche that I went up to the Empire State Building and I saw the views, and I basically realized that there are lots of buildings that are as tall or even taller than the Empire State Building. And I just basically was really curious about what the view from those buildings looked like. That's when I started to work on my book and my project. I chose 25 buildings, high, ultra luxury towers. 93 stories above the city, this is what $81 million gets you. A full penthouse, 8,400 square feet with floor to ceiling views of a metropolis. My goal was really to show those views that are considered to be the best views you can privately own in New York. First, I really just wanted to photograph the views for the book. As I was going deeper and deeper in this world, it became more and more obvious that it's like something totally bizarre and crazy. I was like laying in bed and really I was just thinking, how could I get in those buildings? I remember I told about the project to the curator who was working at the residency and she told me no way they would ever let you in without a credit check. The only way for that is to pretend to be a billionaire who is searching for an apartment. From the moment on that I started to work on the project, this was pretty much the only thing I could think about. Write it down, check the address, go home, check if there's any real estate available, call the agency and usually next day go and see it and take a picture of the view. And so really for three months. Okay, but you're paying $81 million to live, le live next to like Les Wegsner. Is it worth it? No. And also a lot of the fucking conditions that they... Sh Dude, after a certain point, it's diminishing returns 100%.
I mean, there's also studies on the matter too. Like after a certain point of wealth, there are diminishing returns when it comes to happiness. And there are certainly diminishing returns. This is one of those fucking instances where like, you quite literally are like, like there's only so much money can buy. Okay. You're, you're living on a fucking psychotic penthouse at that point. Uh, where where the building is like wobbly as shit, you know what I mean? You're just it's it's more so just a a flex at that point. And most of those people don't even live there. They just like they the yeah the high rise uh, four three two park uh, comes to mind when you think about that. Like the downside of life in the super fault super tall tower leaks creaks and breaks. Um, is it, it's kind of dog shit uh, uh it, to live in a situation like that, and you're paying like a hundred million dollars or whatever the fuck uh to be in that situation i don't know i just i think it's it's ridiculous months i was living and most of these people don't even live there full time they just have it and they sit on it because it's another way to shelter it's another way to you know persona own a depreciating asset that could potentially appreciate in value that you can use as a way to offset your taxes yada 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 there's a lot of fucking there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, advantages that the government offers to uh, people who own and hold real estate. Force on the A-Line from Brooklyn to Manhattan. My name is Daniel Rosenstein. I've worked in real estate for four years. I met Andy two years ago when she was infiltrating New York's most exclusive properties. I was doing Airbnb in my apartment in the Upper West Side. And first I remember that he asked me, what are you doing in New York? And when he said he's a real estate agent, I was actually a bit hesitant to tell him what I came here for. She you know, told me that she was making a book. So I think at first I was like, oh, is she mocking our profession? I'm just a pawn in your project here. And then the more she was talking about it, the more I saw her point of view, which is almost nobody has access to these apartments. You have to go through a doorman, you have to reach out to a real estate agent. It's not a normal real estate market where you can show up to an open house. She asked a few questions, uh, I think, how to navigate getting into buildings. I told her to use the term, we're looking for a pied-a-terre or second home in the city. A lot of uh, really wealthy people look for second, third, fourth, fifth homes. And she, at that point, had essentially created her whole persona. Gabriela is my actual middle. I'm not going to lie. I wish they just, like, instead of... Inst the fuck instead of focusing on like the events that took place uh and and like what she did to be able to infiltrate these circles i would have just liked to seen the houses and her just shitting on it i didn't realize that this video was just like about her and how she like was able to do this you know what i mean like come on show us the houses dude because come on. at the beginning i didn't know if they would check my passport ever and actually at some of the properties, they did check it. And I remember back then I was really obsessed by many of these small details that I need to do my nails and I need to have uh, proper shoes, proper bag. In order to do this project, I needed to bring my camera and photograph the view. This made me obviously very unusual in the eyes of the agents, but I also realized that the stranger I act, the more convincing it is that I'm actually a billionaire and I just don't give a shit. I was really, really nervous at this very first viewing. The agent started to ask me if I have a chef, if I have a nanny, if we have private chauffeur. So I just randomly answered yes and no. And all of these answers kind of became part of what Gabriella was. You tell your husband every morning that this is really where you want to be. There are a few like chaotic good inventing Anna, you know what I mean? Like she did the same shit, but instead of like scamming people, she basically like, I guess, did it so that she could like get her way into these uh, billionaire penthouses and like expose them. <laughs> but I want to see types of agents. There are the ones who are kind of like very natural and just showing you here is the kitchen, here is the bathroom, this is the price. And there is the complete other end of the spectrum. You will feel Gabriella. It is like going on a journey from the sidewalks of 19th century old New York to the sidewalks of Florence. I actually might Yeah, I want that. This is what I want. I want like so fucking... imagine your daughter running around saying words in Hungarian. It was really hard to kind of like 
keep a straight face in those viewings. I mean, it was like really bizarre what they were telling me. I want that. It really is a moment for you. Just tell your husband he loves you and he wants you to be happy. I'm sure he will not say no to you <laughs> if you let him know this is really your first choice. Okay, I want because that. I want that. I want more of that. This ultra luxury segment. Give me more. Of the is more of that. Not really going that well. The newer the development, the crazier the amenities they have because there's really this like huge competition. Also, why the fuck? I mean, I guess she's Hungarian. Is that why? Because like, because like, why the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm imagining she's not even Hungarian, right? <laughs> and he's just saying that randomly. Like, that's the language that you should learn. Your child should learn as a as a as the fucking fail son or daughter of a billionaire. <laughs> Just randomly. One of the things that became an absolute standard for these buildings is the golf simulator room. Michelin starred private restaurant in the building, theater, swimming pool, obviously. Equinox gym, they have children's playroom, a billiards room, a conference room, and everything in between. In one of the penthouses, it was that they would give you a yacht as a present when you buy the apartment. What? A yacht. A yacht. Yo, that is fucking, what? That's, what the fuck? Bro, what is happening, dude? How is that a thing, dude? What the fuck? They're just like, hey, dude, th th here, you want this fucking thing that you're never going to live inside of? Here, let's give you a depreciating asset the moment that it fucking, the mo uh, from the moment of purchase, that's just literally a money sink. It, it has a yucked, has no value outside of just being a fucking money sink, okay? It is the, it is the, like, it's the dumbest thing that you can buy. It's just straight up something you buy when you have too much fucking money. That's it. Pusha T, yacht pronunciation. Yachts are bad because of depreciating asset for no other reason. No, but like, it, there is literally no other, there is nothing. Like, there is no utility. It's just like a fucking thing that you're purchasing that immediately is like halving in value the moment that you purchase it. It's like a house on a sea that you're never going to be inside of that costs a fuckload more than a house that, to even upkeep. And that also, on top of that, is halved the moment that you fucking purchase it. It's useless. Like some cars, lolol is a great example, except like, you know, you still drive a fucking car on your day to day. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not as costly in maintenance as a yacht is. And there is straight up no fucking utility at all for it. Like no utility at all for it. And the only reason why these motherfuckers are buying is because like they just have enough money to buy it. They're like, yeah, fuck it, YOLO. Like I have enough money. Yachts are incredibly destructive to the environment, but in their manufacture, in their, in, but their manufacture and use, that too. Yeah, a car doesn't also require a crew to drive it either. Obviously, there is that part of that as well that, uh, you know, uh, plays a role there. Speaking of yachts, let me just point this out real quick. The newly created disinformation board should review this tweet or maybe... They need to form a new non sequitur board instead. Raising corporate corporate taxes is fine to discuss. Taming inflation is critical to discuss. Mushing them together is just misdirection. That's what you know. One of the world's fa uh, wealthiest fucking uh, billionaires had to say about Joe Biden saying, "You want to bring down inflation? Let's make sure the wealthiest corporations pay their fair share." Um, Joe Biden, hate to say this, is correct in that assessment. By the way, that is one way to combat inflation. Uh, so Jeffrey Jebediah Bezos over here being like, uh-huh, that has nothing to do with inflation is, is just being a fucking little freak here. Sorry, shouts out to my boss being an actual fucking demon once again. Uh, and then speaking of yachts, Rob says, is this your boat, Jeff? And uh, to that, my answer is yes, that is actually his boat. That is Jeffrey Jebediah Bezos' boat. Straight the fuck up. Is the billionaire equivalent of homes that can come with Teslas is like a tiny signing bonus in comparison to the price of the real estate. It just, it's fucking ridiculous, dude. Absolutely ridiculous.
Go to GoFundMe to buy you a yacht just to annoy the right wingers? No, because that's really fucking annoying. And there's a infinitely better use for everyone else's money in that situation than than that. Okay. And it won't just fucking annoy the right wingers. It will also annoy everyone in my uh, in my community as well. Understandably. Like, I don't want that. I never leave my house. I already bought a fucking car that is expensive. And uh, regardless of not ever leaving my house, I already bought a car that's expensive. And I barely ever drive it. And people fucking yell at me. Ironically, people will like you more if you did that. Bezos is scared of regular people having another reason to support higher taxes on them. Yeah. <sighs> Yucked. Even though I have no, um, I have no problem with my with my car purchase. It was awesome, and I feel great about it. And uh, you know, it makes me feel happy. It has, uh, it's like one of those things where it is one of those things where it's like it makes uh, my my uh, daily drive, which is already like not a lot, way more pleasurable. So I'm very happy with it. How often do you charge it? Um, like once a week, because that's how little I drive. So you mentioned the number of people who are actually living in poverty, according to the federal poverty numbers. Uh, but we all know living in New York, uh, it's a whole different ball game. The average rent across the city has returned to nearly pre-pandemic levels. Hey, I work at a gas station in Texas. I was removing a Biden sticker the other day from a gas pump and a lady drove by and said, hey, you know, his vandalism to remove those stickers from pumps and seem serious. What's your thoughts on that? <laughs> all I'm going to say to you, my friend, is, you know, uh, uh, just have fun with it. Okay, just have fun with those with those people. I, I don't know what to tell you. I hope your I hope your days are fun uh, at the very least. It's little things like that that probably make your job a little bit more entertaining to you. So just try to have fun with it. We built fewer homes in the 2010s than in any decade going back to the 1960s. I think the way poverty is usually portrayed is from the bottom. So talk about homelessness or you talk about people who cannot afford housing. I think when you see it from this like very top of the sphere, it somehow is also very telling. The buildings that you can see from every single corner of the city are these ultra luxury real estate, which are not accessible for anyone really. Apartments and buildings are standing 60 to 70% empty. Commercial and residential wonderland featuring some of the city's tallest buildings and most expensive restaurants and condos. If you are looking to call Steinway. Elysium is literally just real life. This is why I love, this is why I, it's one of my favorite movies and Zizek's, one of Zizek's favorite movies as well, is that it's pure ideology, but it's also something that is happening in the real world. Like you literally see it. This is in the real world. There is a real world example of Elysium. It's Manhattan. My tower home studios start at seven point seven million dollars. Listen, you know, not to be not sympathetic to the homeless, but if you live in one fifty seven, you're paying. Not to not be sympathetic to the homeless lady. You're on some like fucking local TV, uh, the business channel. Everything you're saying is going to be not sympathetic to the homeless. You don't even need to qualify it like. Half of the fucking arguments revolving around this is probably going to be like melting them into uh, biomatter. Millions of dollars to live there. Are, do you want a homeless shelter in your building? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Not to not be sympathetic to the homeless, but like, 
Can we just melt them if they have no practical utility in commodity production? We are not building enough housing for everybody who needs a place to live. Here's what it's like living in the smallest apartment in New York. Wherever your expectations are, lower them. So these buildings are kind of really soulless in a sense. They are super standardized. The trends that I see in these properties are a lot of the same finishes and materials used. Some of the floor plans are the exact same. I think it's a really challenging uh, task to create something different when you're working with essentially the same floor plan, which is a tall square or a rectangle in the sky. Oh, wow. Who was the interior designer? Deborah Burke. There is no one better. <laughs> Deborah Burke. <laughs> Why? Why this dude sound like a vampire, dude? What the fuck? Dude, we got to watch more of these. I used to love watching like fucking a billionaire house uh, real estate agents talk about this shit. Deborah Burke. She is the number one designer. <laughs> oh, dude, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. She loves marble, as you can see. We're in design at the moment. So you have always um, just some very special type of marble in the apartment that the agents would always have. For the record, like, uh, I will point this out once again. I will never become a billionaire, okay? There, you have my promise. Uh, this is something that Linus tweeted out the other day as well. Uh, I will never become a billionaire, okay? Don't worry. <laughs> it's not happening. My BK place isn't much bigger than my jail cell, but probably cost as much as your house. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Highlight. The marble is Siberian, which is now the best on the market. Then you would have the oak floor, which is always the best type of oak floor. And there's like really nothing that would make any... Even if you wanted, you wouldn't though. I mean, yeah, the, it, it's a... It's a profoundly difficult thing, regardless. But more importantly, the the amount of fucking suffering you need to cause the others in your effort to become one. Like, there are some labor billionaires at this point because, you know, that's where we're at with inflation and whatnot. But, like, it is so I incredibly rare that, you know, it's not the norm at all. It's like four or five in comparison to the, uh, to the entirety of the billionaire class that have gotten there through, uh, you know trading uh and and uh, capital accumulation for the most part and also hiring and exploiting people anne ordur ettim ordur ettim senin yemeğini um 20 dakika falan i don't know ben söylemedim oh did i see this earlier yes i did I was going to actually post this, but then I thought, like, you know, people would get mad at me, so I didn't. But, yeah, here is Chris Bosch talking to Lori Lightfoot. Dude, she's so, so funny. I'm sorry. I'm not going to say anything further. It, that's just, like, a wonderful uh, photo, okay? I just I, I appreciate that photo. These buildings stand out, to be honest. But it's not really surprising when you realize that it's solely a form of investment yeah. in most of the cases. So it Millionaires should not exist either. I agree. I agree. You're right, dude. You're right. I think starting with me, though, you should come and kill me, I think. Um, that's what... I think that will, that will create socialism. If you come and, like, murder me, uh, I think you will be able to achieve socialism straight up. 100%. That's how this works. It, it, it practices sweaty. Your haters are already on it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Millions isn't an insane amount for a person to accumulate. I mean, the uh, average middle class person uh, through their lifetime is going to most likely hit that number. A lot of people still don't because average means that there are plenty of people who still won't be able to. It is a far more achievable uh, and, and far more realistic number that you can achieve. After all, I have achieved it. Um, and I'm a fucking dumbass. But... I, to, I understand the conversation that people have around like being able to accumulate a million dollars and, and how, much, uh, how much wealth is, when so much wealth disparity exists on the planet. All at that chatter, I've accumulated 400 in savings and I work in software engineering. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. The point isn't how much money is accumulated. The issue is how wealth is accumulated. Exactly. Ding, 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 ding. 
Uh, when you die, you drop an item. When consumed, it establishes socialism like an Elden Ring boss. Yeah, literally. Hasanabi should donate all of his money above 999 <laughs> per year to his viewers. Thoughts? Wait. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I have a secret for you. The way that I make money is the reverse of that. Maybe you are unaware of this. <laughs> but you've been contributing to the fund for six months at least. <laughs> <laughs> Give it back! <laughs> Um, I feel like you took the worst possible interpretation of the chatter's comment. I don't know. No, I think that a lot of people, uh, I think people unironically feel like that is like, there are definitely some people on the internet who literally feel like I am the same as Jeff Bezos or some shit. That is what people think is the same way that I am. Um, uh, generating uh, my my wealth but not only that but also they will literally try to make the argument that like i am um i am exploiting the amazon workers that work in uh facilities because of uh, being a twitch streamer who's uh who's still labor is extracted whose profits are extracted uh from him albeit it still doesn't matter because like i still make a fuckload but that's not what that chatter said, though, and you interpret it as that. But the chatter that said, I, I think no one should be a millionaire either. What are you, what are you talking about? So people who succeed by their own means should be allowed to have their wealth. I'm confused. Uh, this is a vague concept. If you, if you bring it up like that. That doesn't mean people should not pay back uh, into the main fund, especially when they're incredibly fortunate. That's ridiculous. The difference between a billion and a million is roughly a billion. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's a uh, that's that's an incredibly vague uh, argument that literally turns around and makes it seem like. Oh, well, you know, you made it on your own means. Like, you shouldn't pay taxes then. Like, that's fucking bullshit. It's sad that middle class people are scared to lose their money if they would care about the lower class. <sighs> okay. Having 20,000 options contracts in a tech company or owning rights to ownership of lithium mine in the global south is the same as talking to 25k babies every day and not gaming. Yep. Uh, you are endlessly closer in wealth to chatters and homeless people than Jeffrey Bezos? Yeah, of course. $1 million is different than $500 million. Both are millionaires, not the same. So this kind of shouldn't exist. Look, I don't have a problem living in a fucking planet where, uh, where wealth inequality has been solved. That's awesome. Okay. Wealth inequality has been solved to a degree where like even a millionaire doesn't exist. Great. Okay. If you have, that would mean that you have achieved the, the final goal. It's like the closest you can get to living in a classless, moneyless, stateless, borderless society. I don't have an issue with that at all. I think that is wonderful. I think that that is the future that we should move towards. In the process of moving towards that future, I myself, as a revisionist uh, cuck, believe that there are certain steps that we need to take in the short term, uh, building uh, labor power specifically so that there is some kind of mechanism of of uh retaliation towards our federal government that refuses to uh do what is right by workers is the first step in my opinion okay I'm a revisionist reformist cuck ultimately all right i 
I've been milking this disgusting pig billionaire himbo. I've been tuning into this broadcast relentlessly and have yet to pay zero amounts of money. The revolution is here, folks. The only thing you have to endure is a top of the hour ad break that is coming right now. That's true. That is true. I make it as easy as possible for you to access this uh, content. But even if, uh, you know, even if you still want to subscribe, you can. And one of the many benefits of that is avoiding the top of the hour ad break. Top of the hour, there's a six second ad break. You can avoid it for $5 or you can avoid it for free with a Twitch Prime. That is, of course, if you know someone uh, that has an Amazon Prime account or if you have one, you can connect it to your Twitch account and get one free Prime subscription on me, your favorite streamer. Here's a one minute ad break now. Having labor power is fine, but how do we confront the fact that excess value is still being extracted from workers as a form of profit? Well, how do you fucking try to deal with that? How do you try to push back against that? Also, having more labor power is quite literally uh, less... It's quite literally uh, pushing back against the impact of, of excess value being extracted from workers as a form of profit. That's how it works. When the, the NLRB says, uh, you know, unions or unionization improves your, your uh, yearly salary, increases your yearly salary by 10%, that's what they mean. That's 10% that was taken from the profits that that company was making. That eats into the profit margin of the corporation and takes that tidy little sum and gives it back to you, the worker who actually generated that power, uh, profit through their labor. It's the solution. In a weird way, you uh, basically described the method to achieving uh, the method to achieving the the uh, solution. I think this was the guy, right? Wasn't this the guy who said like uh, pfft, the billionaire? Remember that buildings are bought with blood money. That's true. Um, what are some of the policies that should be enacted to end or lessen exploitation? Um, are you memeing or are you actually interested in playing Stanley Parable? I am interested in it. But shouldn't the company get a cut for creating a job that has value in the first place? What do you mean? There's no such thing. Like, there is no value without labor. A company is not creating a job specifically for the purpose of, like... A company does not create a job specifically for the purpose of... of uh, uh, I don't know, charity or something. Like, that's not a real thing. Not to, not to get too much into theory, but that is, we are currently now engaging in, this is theory hours, like, fuck it, YOLO, but. There is no such thing as, um, there is, there is no such thing as, like, a, a, a profit or value without labor. There is no value without labor. You just simply have a bunch of things, maybe tools or, uh, you know, uh, your, your capital investment sitting there, rotting, depreciating. Sorry for my silly questions. I'm just a one week sub who just got into watching your stream. Okay. Wrong. I'm a labor owner for the altruism. Don't gaslight me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no, no person fucking starts a business uh, for the express purpose of like uh, charity. Most businesses don't start with that. Crypto literally proves there's no value without labor. How wildly it's speculative with, uh, with its value dips. Game with Will Neff, uh, potentially. I'm going to add it one more time because I firmly believe it's comical. Okay, let's finish this. It's really not about living and it's not about having a soul. And it shows. It, it's really obvious when you are there. One of the most striking things was how agents are trying to 
always go out of their way to tell me that no one else lives in this building. What salary should CEOs deserve in your opinion? Do they create any value? No, I don't think CEOs create value. A company could work, a company can function and often, always actually, still functions without a CEO, but a company cannot function without any labor. If we're talking about value, no. The, the CEO can at the the CEO can manage the workers better or push the company in a certain direction, and that's seen as incredibly valuable because it's a it's a super rare uh, uh, designation for people. But they're not like in the fucking the CEO is not like the best chair builder. You know what I mean? Like we didn't in the chair factory we didn't choose the ceo because he's literally like goaded at building the chairs he's like fucking putting the chairs together way faster than anybody else what is the value of uh the what is the value for the person that came up with the idea so that's another that's a this is a conversation that a lot of people ask like oh well what if you know you fucking came up with an idea dude what you're describing again is insanely rare like you're talking about even all of the fucking uh billionaire ceos that we hold up as like uh you know titans of industry or whatever uh, are not exactly uh, people that were able to fucking come up with like a unique idea on their own or anything like that you're crazy you know that's not a real thing that's just a capitalist lie that is told to justify uh, that uh, extraction of value, extraction of surplus value from your labor. Like, there's no such concept. Like, it, these guys didn't, like, these guys weren't incredibly good at fucking doing something much better than anyone else. They were just good at hiring the right people or they were good at uh, making it seem like they were the one who came up with a good idea. You know what I mean? People love the concept of democracy until you commit the sin of suggesting it in the workplace. Yeah. And I mean, this doesn't mean that like all fucking companies need to be cooperative uh, ownered, uh, uh, ownership. All companies does not, do not have to be cooperatively owned. Okay. That's not even what I'm saying. Just like socialism doesn't mean fucking uh, pure egalitarian uh, uh, equality that like everyone is making the same amount of money no matter what happens, no matter what your fucking job is. It's just getting more, uh, getting more autonomy and, and uh, getting more power so you can make decisions in your own life and choose to, uh, choose to live a life of dignity and, and fulfillment. Well, tell a holiday retail worker the CEO is important to their work day. Yeah. Why do you act like team building and managing isn't a skill? No, team building and managing is a skill. Why do you act like CEOs are team building and managing? And then there are some that might be, but for the most part, no. You're crazy. I mean, I've talked about this before. The only difference between billionaires that are functionally like demigods... And the prior uh, uh, the organization of both the economy and like the uh, social political existence in, um, you know, uh, uh, theocratic monarchies was the justification. Justification in theocratic monarchies was God is the reason why the king, my lord, in, in my kingdom is run by the chosen, uh, the chosen one. The chosen one is a descendant of heaven, Right. In, in uh, a theocratic monarchy, the chosen one under capitalism is chosen because of probability, because of luck, because of their uh, underlying, uh, material, uh, underlying material circumstances merged with luck and uh, doing the right thing, again, out of luck, doing the right thing in the right moment, deciding to acquire the appropriate skills, luck and timing, your spawn point. These are all, these are all incredibly important these are all incredibly important uh, 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 things that play a role in your success. And if you're profoundly lucky, you can become, you know, a demigod, like a billionaire. But now, instead of God, because, you know, people, you can't float that. You can't be like, oh, God is the reason why I'm a fucking billionaire. 
you say meritocracy. Meritocracy is the lie that holds this entire thing together. That like merit is the reason why a billionaire is as wealthy, is as profoundly wealthy and as powerful as they are. Because this is a meritocratic system where the hardest worker uh, gets the most uh, out of their labor, we have created and designed a system where it makes people feel like billionaires are the hardest working motherfuckers when that is not the case. It could not be further from the truth. I mean, it was luck and material conditions in feudal times as well. Nothing has changed. Yes, I'm just talking about the justification for it. Of course, it's always been luck and material conditions in feudal times. But in feudal times, it was God, it was religion that uh, maintained the social order. It was because God had willed it. And now, in modern day, it's meritocracy. Meritocracy is the reason why you deserve to be in the position that you're in. It's a, and you can feel that exact same thing in your lucky condition as well by matching yourself against, uh, matching yourself against uh, other people that are less fortunate than you. Doesn't Elon work the most hours a week? Dog, there is, what, what are you talking about? Does he work more hours in the week than there are hours in the week then? Because you're crazy if you think that. The amount of money that Elon Musk generates has absolutely nothing to do with how many hours uh, that he's working. He would have to work like literally thousands and thousands of hours a day in order to generate that kind of, um, in order to generate that kind of value, that generate that kind of income. That I'm not going to have any neighbors. A lot of these billionaire road towers are investments for overseas and local people. So they'll rent them out or they'll just own them, have them sit empty for a number of years. Extremely high streamer pay, CEO pay, etc. are all known as winner-takes-all markets and are also problematic. It's not just from labor that makes earning money okay. We should end private ownership, but also labor inequality is a major issue. Yes, if you think that like achieving labor equality starts with Twitch streaming, though, you're fucking brain broken, literally. Like You equate Twitch streaming, which is oftentimes like a singular endeavor for the most part, to literally what CEOs do, which is sit around and manage other people.